Wow Virtual Bangladesh 2022 organized by British Council, CCD Bangladesh and Mongol Deep Foundation. প্রিয় দর্শক আমি মাইমনা ফেরদোস মমু সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি ওয়াও উৎসবের দ্বিতীয় দিনে আশা করছি সবাই ভালো আছেন এবং গতকাল আমাদের প্রথম পর্বটি উপভোগ করেছেন ইতিমধ্যে সবাই জেনে গেছেন ওয়াও বেসিক্যালি নারীদের একটি প্ল্যাটফর্ম যেখানে আমরা তুলে ধরার চেষ্টা করি বিভিন্ন ক্ষেত্রে নারীদের অবদানের কথা আমাদের সমাজে আমরা জানি নারী এবং পুরুষ একে অন্যের পরিপূরক তারা সহযোদ্ধা তারা বন্ধুও বটে কিন্তু এই পুরুষতান্ত্রিক সমাজে পুরুষেরা কি সেটা মানতে রাজি একজন নারীকে কি তারা সহযোদ্ধা বন্ধু ভাবে বা ভাবলেও আসলে একজন নারীর এগিয়ে যাওয়াতে সেটা কতটুকু অবদান রাখে এই গুরুত্বপূর্ণ বিষয়টিকে কেন্দ্র করে আজ শুরুতেই থাকছে একটি প্যানেল ডিসকাশন যেখানে অংশগ্রহণ করবেন পাঁচজন গুণী ব্যক্তিত্ব মডারেটর হিসেবে থাকছেন সাকিব বেন রশিদ এবং আলোচনায় অংশগ্রহণ করবেন ডক্টর রুমানা দৌলা নাভিদ মাহবু সেই সাথে থাকছেন শারমিন রহমান এবং সাবিনা আখতার চলুন আর দেরি না করে শুনে আসি সেই প্যানেল ডিসকাশন Hello everyone, I welcome everyone to a very intriguing conversation and discussion in the panel today. And today we have a very interesting issue to talk about. What does it mean to be an ally globally and inside Bangladesh? The feminist movement has progressed quite a bit, but still today, sometimes we feel that the issue of feminism is somewhat a women's duty. Uh, we don't see a lot of men being engaged and the small number of men who are actively engaged Uh, in the pursuit of equal rights for women, they are often categorized as simps, as womenly men. And they're shamed. I think uh, it's a very timely discussion that we must have. The discussion is regarding what does it mean to be an ally. Before we start our discussion, let's get introduced to uh, all our panelists. And I'll request the panelists to introduce themselves. We will start with Rumana Pa. Uh, thank you, Saki. I'm Dr. Rumana Dawla. I'm a physician. I'm a founder chairperson of Bangladesh Palliative and Supportive Care Foundation. Advocacy focal person for Bangladesh, for IHPC, which is International Association of Hospice and Palliative Care. Hi, I'm Naveed Mahbub. I'm a stand-up comedian. I run a comedy club. I'm also a late night TV show host and executive producer. I am by training I'm, by training I'm an electrical engineer I've uh, worked at different companies in the US and in Bangladesh I also served at the as the CEO of Nokia Networks and IBM in Bangladesh and I'm uh, a stay home dad to three kids Hello I'm Sharmin I am a uh, advertising communication expert working at Gramin Phone as the head of corporate brand and engagement I also worked a long time in advertising and then I started my career with uh, working for textile and fashion and trying to build a very craft culture for the world to see Bangladesh. And at the same time, I love being home with my cats and I love to travel. Finally, we have Sabin Akhtar, programmer, WOW Foundation, UK. And last and probably the least, myself, Saki Bin Rashid. Um, I work for an edtech company named 10 Minute School. I make educational content over there. I'm also a consultant to BRAC, uh, BRAC Youth Platform. I also make stupid videos on Facebook, sometimes uh, for gender equality, and that's probably why I'm here today. Thank you so much for making me the moderator in this great session today. Uh, we would like to share a small video with everyone watching this uh, telecast. So uh, if we could uh, start the video right now. No, I don't think so. No, no. Maybe yes. Yeah, I think so. I think not yet. 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 I don't think so. I think not yet. 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 এরকম বিভিন্ন আইন প্রণয়ন হয়েছে কিন্তু সেটার কার্যকারিতা আমরা আসলে সোসাইটির দিকে তাকালেই বুঝতে পারবো বেশিরভাগ ক্ষেত্রেই হচ্ছে এখনো দেখিনি আমি এটা স্পেশালি দা উইমেন হু আর ম্যারিড দে হ্যাভ নো রাইট 
in in this time right now সমান অধিকারটা নেই একমাত্র দৈহিক যে বৈষম্য এটার বাইরে যে সবার সমান সুযোগ পার কথা সেটা সমাজ আমাকে দিচ্ছে না খাতায় কলমে আছে কিন্তু ওগুলোর বাস্তবায়ন নাই পরিবার সমাজ শিক্ষা প্রতিষ্ঠান বা চাকরি সব ক্ষেত্রেই নারীরা আসলে বৈষম্যের শিকার হয় সমাজে নারীদের যে ইনসিকিউরিটি একটা ব্যাপার আছে যার কারণে দেখা যাচ্ছে যে পুরুষদেরকে হয়তো ওই জব সেক্টরে এলাও করছে কিন্তু নারীদেরকে করছে না देयर माइट बी सम फैमिलीज हु एंश्योर दैट देयर आर इक्वल राइट्स फॉर द female child as well as the male child but in case of the working class there isn't any equal rights at all amra chesta korchi kintu ekebari na seta na kichu kichu jaygay ache kichu kichu jaygay nei i'll go to sabina for a bit uh, you've been working uh, through wow regarding equality of women for a long time now uh, how do you think the allyship is perceived in the uk and other countries and what do you think allies can actively do to uh, move this movement forward hi everyone thank you for having me here um yeah as you said sakib you know it's there's a there's a global perspective and i think allyship differs from region to region and from issue to issue um and i mean so the wow foundation is absolutely dedicated to um convening women and girls to um believing that a gender equal, equal world is possible and that it's very urgent and achievable um but as i said that changes from where we are so the uk is not free from gender equality um as they may like to have you believe um and i think one of the key one of the key ways is how we look um at gender inequality so it's a human rights issue it's not a women's issue and that's how many people perceive it um and we need to understand gender inequality as a systemic problem and not just isolated incidences of sexism so like dr romana said there she was very privileged in having um you know a, a very equal upbringing a gender equal upbringing but we know that on a societal level um systemically there are massive problems with gender inequality so in the uk for example you know 35% of women are on boards the rest are, are men you know there's a gender pay cap where men are paid a lot more for the same job than women um you know if you look at our parliament only a third of people who are members of parliament are women and these are just examples of how gender inequality is institutionalized so i think it's really important that we we look at it through that lens and not just through um isolated incidences of sexism thank you so much savina for sharing your thoughts i'll go to navid bhai navid bhai as an entertainer as a comedian you have the ability to influence a uh, lot of young people why do you think young men are not actively speaking in favor of uh, gender equality adequately do you think enough men are doing this and if not why why do we not have more men allies my personal take is that perhaps if we go drill down to the individual level maybe men are not seeing the value of um of uh, being allies uh, to the women in their lives because in my particular case i i you know i was a um i was a stay home dad for 3 years while my wife went to college and every time we had a kid i actually quit my job i'm the one who quit the job and stayed home so i i found that it was a, a, a it, w- it was a joy it was a um it was it was absolutely uh, phenomenal to be in that role so if many men would realize that that uh, it's not uh, it's not a blow to the ego to be an ally to the women in their lives on the, on the flip side it actually boosts their ego if if you really must use the word ego then i think a lot of more men would 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 really step up uh, where we are not stepping up i'll give you a small example that when my uh, wife was going to grad school we were living in california So I quit my job I we had a little daughter so I I was a stay home dad to that little daughter and I would take her around everywhere and you know if I were because over there you had to keep the baby with yourself and I could tell that I probably physically I was not the most attractive person on the beach but I could tell a lot of uh, people from the uh, many people appreciated the fact here's this young father um he, who's like overwhelmed carrying diaper bags and a little daughter but they found that whole scene to be very attractive so Uh, if in a, even if in a very egoistic sense m- men would look at things that way uh, they will they will re- realize that if they step up in their roles in society in 
in bridging the gap in gender equality, they, are, they end up being very attractive people. Thank you, Navid Bhai. Um, I'll go to Sharmin Appa. Uh, so while growing up, what kind of support did you receive from the allies around you? And did you feel that having these allies in your life was a significant part of your growth as a person? Okay, uh, thank you, Sakib, and thank you, Wow Initiative, for having me here. Before going to uh, answer your questions, I would just like to mention that we, uh, all of us present here, are the are from the fortunate clan. That we, uh, the matter of fact that we are here, it shows that we have had good allyship and we have had good support because we, none of us, could do it by ourselves uh, here. But then again, I, um, as a person, I got to, uh, I come from a very middle class background and all my uh, family members are moderately educated, not very fortunate of the society. But work-wise, when I, I was, uh, for a long period of time, I worked in advertising. And then before that, I worked in fashion designing. So all these fields are very male predominant. You know that in our advertising field, there's no female creative director. I, while I was there, I was the only one. So many a nights I found myself being the only woman on the floor of 83 men to, uh, together. And then never, never on any night I felt that I am with 83 men in one floor. Uh, that's the kind of allyship I got because they let me be, they let me be who I was. They let me do my thing. They didn't put me in a box. You know what I mean? They didn't put me in a box of a woman. They let me be me they, because I am more than a woman. I'm more than my gender. I am my skills. I am my age, I am my work, I am my passion. So they didn't see me as a, a different person or a different species. So, so that really worked for me and made me who I am today. So that's the kind of allyship we need to move forward. And I think um, I didn't, I, like I said, I didn't face much, but I did feel, uh, did get some of those, you know, uh, things that really um, got into my head. You know, when we were in advertising, uh, when uh, I'm doing a pitching or telling a story, my client, obviously a male person, uh, he was trying to give me feedback and then he didn't uh, do eye contact with me. Like, like it's been a, um, like I'm the eye of Sauron and his, he will be destroyed with the fire of wrath. And he was heading and looking towards the male sitting beside me and giving feedback to him, the thing that I pitched for. So that's the kind of a things I got. It, got. it got to my head. I didn't feel good. I thought maybe I'm not accepted. But as we progressed and as we worked together, and, and I didn't let that stop me. I didn't let that stop me going to him or to present to him. I did my job. I did whatever I did. And then in one year or some, some nine months, he requested meetings just to just with me, just one-on-one -on -one meetings. And he was so comfortable and not only uh, eye contact, but all sorts of communications were not a problem. So it's, I would say it's a, uh, Alaishi works both ways because the, the man has to play their part and let you be. And then from our end, sometimes like we always do, women do the more, uh, more portion of jobs. Sometimes we have to let go and let things flow and let your work and let your skills speak for you. So. That's the way I think the marriage will happen. That's the way we have to navigate through the whole thing. Uh, so before uh, leaving, if you had any thoughts regarding this uh, conversation that we are having, any thoughts before you leave? Yeah, sure. So I think um, it's really important. You know, we hear about performative allyship and that's really going through the motions. Um, and I think a key example of what we can see in that is, you know, what's happening in the US right now. So when we saw George Floyd was murdered, lots of people, they had, you know, black squares. They said, I'm going to support Black Lives Matter. I'm going to do what I can. And now we've had um, just recently in Buffalo, um, a racist gunman who, who defines himself as a Nazi gunned down black people in America. And people are saying, you know, this is a lone wolf. And this is what happens. Um, real allyship would be confronting white supremacy and dealing with that. And although that issue of race is separate to this issue of gender, there are definite overlaps. Um, and that's why at WOW we always talk about intersectionality and looking at people and their situations in their totality. And we have to remember that when we're talking about allyship. Um, and I think in order to solve gender equality or at least move towards it, we need to start thinking about coalition and building just systems um, and realize that those work, gender equality works for everyone. 
it's not just for the good of women um, and men need to start realizing that they need to that they benefit from gender equality and they need to work towards it not just when it suits them or when it's relatable to them so we see lots of men talking about when they become fathers all of a sudden they they care about the plight of women um, and you know we need to move away from from incidents like that and start thinking about things in their totality um, as institutional as systemic um, and how we can challenge those systems so I think that's what I'll leave you with today um, it's been a pleasure joining you all thank you for letting me be part of this conversation thank you so much Sabina for uh, being a part of this conversation you've been very uh, helpful in actualizing the thoughts with us thank you so much uh, it's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, we'll continue with what Sabina left us with, actually, uh, the incentive structure. A very important question she left us with. Uh, why the men who suddenly become fathers suddenly become so aware of gender equality and in their earlier lives, they don't realize. How do we educate young men? Uh, I think I'll go to Rumana Appa with this question. Uh, young boys, how do we educate them better so that they become allies? What do you think? As for that, first thing a child sees is the home environment. So what they see around them, how uh, the grandparents are, how father, uh, the parents are behaving with each other. Then they go out to the school. Then they see how, uh, you know, uh, older boys are behaving with young, you know, girls around them. Or, uh, you know, that's how you build your thoughts and ideas. Environment teaches you. You're not born with certain way. And then slowly, of course, your personality develops. But that's much later after puberty or adolescence. So you pick up things and from what you read and what you see. So I think, first of all, uh, creating a very uh, safe environment uh, for boys and girls to grow with mutual respect is very important and uh, enabling environment. But if they see that, they learn from it. And then to now in the era of, you know, globalization, internet, what they're watching, what they're seeing, what they're reading, it's so important. And I, I can tell you from my experience, uh, we are the, you know, born in this around 60s and what we have seen is from black and white tv to internet and uh, our children are born with internet and they have uh, it's like they have the globe in their hands so they could rap when i didn't even know how rap came around you know so one day i see my son come out and rap so what i'm saying is it's so global everything so they they know more than what we think they know so before their young mind picks up things, we need to set a very important example of what is right, what is wrong. What is a good human being is first, then good boy or good girl. You know what I mean? Thank you, Ruman Appa. Sharmin Appa, I'll, I'll come to you now. Uh, I think there has been a lot of discussion regarding allies. How do allyship you know, is being evaluated, you know, right now, there are a lot of content creators, there are a lot of columnists who are pro equality, or pro feminist. But however, do you think the combination is right? In the sense that do you think women who are feminists who are working for the equal rights, they perceive the uh, allies properly, and they combine well together? Or do you think they are very separate lines and the, do, you, do you think there is enough uh, think between these two groups? Okay, so uh, in my limited exposure towards all this, uh, what I can say is I see a very good intention going on because all the men who are uh, trying to play, the, play their part in allyship, uh, being vocal, saying things or doing things and creating examples, like creating used cases, so to say, are all good. But in doing so, sometimes uh, I do see, especially in our country, that uh, people tend to, uh, you know, brand things in such a way or put things, uh, compartmentalize things in such a way that it will come across like you are imposing things. So uh, a, certain, a certain act or a certain action uh, is probably natural. 
it is it is only natural that you do your house chores and uh, your uh, wife does hers it's it's only natural and then you when you brag about it and brand about it and brand it with a certain uh, ism then 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 the counterproductive part arises that is in my mind that that happens uh, with the with the male participation because it's all welcome because all all are done with good intention no one has a bad intention when they write a column or wash a dish uh, so to say and i think keeping an open mind and the culture of inclusion always helps because uh, like i said before and uh, we'll be listening to all the panelists here that you cannot do things alone because uh, this society is built with men and women you have to be companions you have to complement each other so that is that is what i think and a small thing to that um, at the reason why i asked about the sink is because the thing that you said that sometimes it comes off as imposing that uh, oh i am doing you a great favor you needed me you could not have done it without me it comes off at, at uh, that that way it also sometimes there are uh, female feminists who come off as oh we don't need you uh, uh, we, we can do it ourselves i think a balance needs to be drawn uh, there are systematic problem systematic issues that we all are parts of uh, look patriarchy is not a system built by men only patriarchy is a system built by everybody and we are all of us are a part of it so if all of us don't step out of it don't fight against it this can never be solved which is why i think that sync is very important uh, both women and male allies they all have responsibilities towards uh, solving this problem uh, we were talking about the health sector uh, if if you think husbands take adequate measures uh, in ensuring uh, health services for their wives at the same time uh, preserving their bodily autonomy thank you for your question as a pediatrician when you're working in neonatal ward you go on calls to gynae department during deliveries i've seen uh, care from husbands and their family members for the wives in different levels it didn't matter from which socio economic status but sometimes sometimes there's probably confusion but i wouldn't say there's a criminal kind of sense of you know not trying to do something it's usually because of lack of information or uh, lack of understanding clarity is important i think when when uh, they are given enough information if it's informed properly then they'll take the right decision this is my uh, you know if i take into the ethics into perspective and there are there will be some cultural aspect the some uh, social aspect uh, there's one question in the chat box to for me and navid bhai what uh, in you know made us become allies i think very simple it was sort of a common sense because while growing up we were i grew up in a very middle class family and culturally we saw our, my mother was did not have a lot of control over things you know she she did not have a lot of control and agency over her own life she has had to endure a lot did not have any agency to say no to a lot of things so i felt that the same should not happen to anyone not to my mother not to my sister not to my wife um, and i think a fairer world uh, a more equal world is fair for everyone i think a world where a woman has the equal responsibility and rights as me is a better world for me as well i don't want to live in a world where things are a bit unfair navid bhai what was your reason why did you become an ally well it's not that i became an ally all of a sudden perhaps i was an ally all along because i was raised in that fashion my mother is a uh, working woman she still is and that's how she raised us i think she did a very very good job in in conflating that notion that there really isn't much of a difference between a male and a female growing up in a society and a family and any environment so to speak and i think that <clears throat> that uh, education that was instilled in me was uh, um starts manifestation when when i got married and we were living in the united states and i think and one of the uh, many good things about western societies that you have to take on roles and 
and uh, rather responsibilities. So when, whenever we look at something as a task rather than a role, that automatically breaks down this artificial definition we have created that this is something that should be done by a man and this is something that should be done by a woman. So to summarize, one is the way we were raised and second is the manifestation of a society we were in where we had to get by as a family, get, get the job done basically, and we did it. And without asking the question whose job it is, rather than it's a job that needs to be done. Sometimes I do it, sometimes she does it. And when you look at it, that, that way it becomes very simple. Thank you so much, Navid Bhai, for your enlightening thoughts. Um, uh, to, I think we are at the end of this conversation. Before we leave for the day, can we have all the panelists to you know, have some concluding remarks regarding today's conversation? Uh, we will start with Shami Napa. To conclude, this will never conclude. This has to be an ongoing journey. Uh, all of us has to adopt to it, has to play our parts. And then I cannot emphasize less on that, on playing our part and not assigning gender roles, not putting anybody in a box and just helping each other to build the world, help, helping each other to, to fulfill all your dreams and do good for the community at the same time. So like I said, it has to be a continuous journey. It has to, we have to learn, leave, relearn, unlearn and learn again and do again. So then the journey has to go on. So that's what I want to say. Uh, happy, happy building the world together. Thank you so much. Uh, Navid Bhai. Um, I think uh, as far as gender equality is concerned, we have a long, long way to go. And uh, we definitely have a lot of things to do. But uh, just to start, I think if we look at, uh, as I mentioned a little while ago, is that if we look at um, what we do uh, within a family or within a workplace as a task rather than as something being a role that automatically breaks down these perceived definitions we have as to what who should be doing. And that it, it itself helps quite a bit into uh, in establishing uh, an uh, you know, equality among, among the genders. That's what I think. Uh, Roman Apa. So um, at the end, I'd say that we wish for a world where we are better human beings. We are supportive of each other. We uh, respect each other as men and women, and we celebrate each other's uh, positivity and help negate the negativity. So uh, the resultant effect will be a better world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Romanata. I think feminist movement, uh, women will always be the front runners of this movement, no doubt about it. But at the same time, because patriarchy was built by all of us, it's all of us who need to contribute in breaking that. Uh, it's any movement uh, needs to be received well by the entire community, which is why it's very important for men, particularly privileged men, men in the positions of power, uh, so that they contribute to this cause. And I think there is a very strong incentive structure as well. A world, I enjoy that in, uh, incentive a lot. My wife earns a lot of money uh, for me. Uh, she does a lot of work that in an unequal world, I would have to do. She pays a lot of bills. She takes a lot of family responsibilities. And I think an equal world will is a better world for everyone. So I, 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 the ending thought that I'll probably share with everyone is let's all contribute. Let's all do our parts in building a more fair and equal world. I thank all the panelists for being a part of this conversation and being a part of the movement of equality. I thank everyone who, have, uh, who has watched this uh, discussion so far. Please share your thoughts in the comment section. We would like to learn more from you. Please share your thoughts with your peers in regards to how to create a more equal world and how to encourage allyship in young men and women. Thank you everyone for uh, this time and take care. Have a great day. Bye bye. Shudhu matro shaman angshu gohon nai. Nari odhikar nishchit korte. Purushera pare bishesh bhumi ka palon korte. Eta amra jhanla matchkar ek guru to purno panel discussion theke. Aasha rakhi. Amader shamajre nari ra purusha shamu ka khuge egiye jabe. Priyo dashok. Ekhon amra shunbo Mongol the Foundationer Executive Director Sriya Shorbojay mullo ban kichu kotha. Chulo shune aasha jay. Hello, ibong shagotom. Wow, virtual Bangladesh. 
আমি শ্রিয়া সর্বজয়া মঙ্গলদি ফাউন্ডেশনের এক্সিকিউটিভ ডিরেক্টর এবং ট্রাস্টি হিসেবে আছি মঙ্গলদি ফাউন্ডেশনের আমাদের মূল মোটো হচ্ছে আর্ট ফর চেঞ্জ এবং আমরা বিশ্বাস করি যে যে কোনো সৃজনশীল কাজ একটা মানুষের চিন্তা ভাবনা এবং তার কাজকে অনেক ইতিবাচকভাবে প্রভাব করতে পারে এবং সেই কাজ করি বলেই আমরা আসলে ওয়াও ভার্চুয়ালের এবং পুরো ওয়াওয়ের পার্টনার হিসেবে আছি আমি নিজে এই আয়োজনের সাথে থাকতে পেরে আমার খুব ভালো লেগেছে আমি অনেক অনুপ্রাণিত বোধ করেছি অনেকগুলো গল্প শুনে এবং আমি আশা করছি আপনারাও সেই সেই একই ফিলিংটা নিয়ে এই আয়োজনটা দেখছেন এবং দেখতে থাকবেন অ্যান্ড আই রিয়েলি হোপ ইউ উইল এনজয় দ্য রেস্ট অফ দ্য প্রোগ্রাম অসাধারণ কিছু কথা শুনলাম শ্রিয়া সর্বজয়ের কাছ থেকে প্রিয় দর্শক এখন আমরা চলে যাব ওয়াও পপ আপ পারফরমেন্স সেগমেন্টে যেখানে আমরা দেখব উইলিয়াম শেক্সপিয়ার রচিত ম্যাকবেথ নাটকের অ্যাডপ্টেশন ধলেশ্বরী অপেরার অংশবিশেষ যেখানে অভিনয় করেছেন মঞ্চের দুজন গুণী অভিনয়শিল্পী ত্রপা মজুমদার এবং পান্থ সারিয়ার চলুন আয়োজনটি দেখা যায় আরো কি খুন আছে তবে আমার হাতে তোর শাড়িতে অঘন না তোর গন্ধ থাকে কেন আর কত দূরে অনেক দূরে এই ধলেশ্বরী অপেরা সাইড অনেক দূরে যেখানে কেউ চিনে না আমাগরে হলো প্রধান হাওয়াটা বড় কিছু না ওয়া ঢাকাটাই আসুন সাইন আমি আর কিছুই কেন আমি আমার মুরাদ রে ফেরত চাই বড় দেরি হয়ে গেছে রে নয়ন কিছু দেরি হয় নাই কিছু দেরি হয় নাই আচ্ছা কি যায় আসে এই দল চলে গেলে যখন আমি আমি তোর সামনে দাঁড়ায় বলবো সন্তান আছে তোর আমার কাছে সব ছেড়ে চলে যাবো রাইত ভোর হবার আগে একবার কিছু যে কষ্ট না মুরাদ বুঝে খুশিতে হারা গেছে তো সব ডর মুরাদ ছেলেটা বড় হইলে পর আমরা নিজেদের একটা দল গড়ব এই ধলেশ্বরী অপেরার চেয়েও বড় একটা দল এর চেয়েও বড় এর চেয়েও বড় দল গড়ব তাবুর ভিতর থেকে মালের বোতলটা আনবি নয়ন আইস তুই জনে মিলে একসাথে মাল খাবো ভুলে যাবো যা ছিল আমাদের অতীত কার সন্তান এই মুরাজ রঙের সরে মানের 
বিশের মতো সুইটা যায় তারে তো আমি চিনি নাই এতকাল ধলেশ্বরী অপেরা স্বপ্ন ছিল রাজরানী হবা সময় ছিল প্রধান নটি আর এখন নিজেরই মুখ দেখাতে ডাইনি কি ছিল তবে নিজের সন্তান রে আস্তাই মারতে হয় নিজেরই হাতে কিন্তু 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 কিভাবে মারবো তারে আমি সুযোগ না পায়ুটের গন্ধ আসে আমার এই শাড়ি থেকে সেই গন্ধে সারা শরীর চলে যায় আমার তার তো আর কোন পথ নাই মৃত্যু সারা কিন্তু কি করে মারবো তারে আমি যদি না নিজেরই মৃত্যু হয় সবার আগে তবে বুঝছি আর রাজরানী হয়ে থাকা হলো না আমার থাকা হলো না মুরাদ সঙ্গের তুমি হবে রাজা যদি থাকে তোমার পাশে নয়ন তারা নয়ন আর থাকবে না মুরাদ নয়ন আর থাকবে না নয়ন আর থাকবে না মুরাদ
असाधारण परफरमेंस मध्य दिए मायमन फेट दोस्त मोमो आज के विदाय दीची आगामी कल आबार हाजिर हो जाब वाओ उत्सव तृत्य एपिसोड नहीं आशा करी सबा भलो थकबे और करना प्रतरोधे सबधरण सतर्कता मे चलें साथे जरा आज के वाओ भार्चुअल बांगलेशे उपस्थित छे अनुष्ठान उपभोग कर सबा के अनेक अनेक धन्यवाद वाओ भार्चुअल बांगलेश टोटी टोटी टू अर्गानाइज बै ब्रिटिश काउन्सिल सिसिडी बांगलेश एंड मंगलदीप फाउंडेशन 